Hello, this is Joe Neville and welcome to another Python and Aruba OS Switch API video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the new version of code for Aruba OS Switch that came out at the tail end of 2017, that's 16.05, and the new way to handle cookies in this code. First of all, let's have a quick recap. So to log into a switch and authenticate via the API for our REST calls, we need to send a valid username and password to our Aruba switch to the login-sessions URL. We then receive a response. If the username and password is correct, we receive a response which contains a cookie, and that's like our passcode for all subsequent REST calls that we have to include. There we go, so our next call includes the cookie. Right, in code 1602 to 1604, so in the past, the cookie was included in the JSON response to the login call. That meant that the JSON needed to be passed, a cookie object created, and passed between your subsequent calls. That meant that if you were using the popular third-party library of requests, you couldn't use the cookie jar feature. Now, the cookie jar is quite convenient because it automatically stores the cookie for you. So you don't need to pass the JSON for the cookie, create a cookie object, and then pass that between your subsequent calls. You just create a cookie jar and a session object and then pass that. Don't worry if you're a bit lost with that. I'll give you an example in the demo coming right up. Okay, here I'm logged into a switch. There we are, it's a 3810M and we're running 1604.11. So this is the previous version of code, which means that we will need to parse the cookie. Here's a simple script that I've written for 1604, just to step you through. I'm importing request JSON pretty print. That's my URL, those are my credentials. And here I make my post to the login session. Of course, I include the credentials in the data segment there. Then I'm going to print out so you can see what comes back. So I've created this R object here for the response. I'm going to print out the headers. This is just cosmetic. You've got headers, then the header, cookie jar. So you'll see that's empty. And then I'll show you the JSON, which includes the cookie in it. Here we have to create the cookie object, and this is a dictionary with the cookie, so the key of cookie, a string there, and then we take the JSON cookie value and put that as the value for our dictionary. I'll print that out so you can see it, and then just a simple action to log out. I'll show you this in action. We do a delete, and there you see I have to include the cookie in the header. Here we are on the command line of my Fedora 27 workstation. There you can see my Python scripts. I'm going to run that 1604 underscore example, which I just showed you. And there we are. So this is the headers that have come back. Okay. There's the cookie jar. So the headers and the cookie jar are more significant for what they don't contain. You don't have the cookie there. You've got nothing in the cookie jar. Here's the JSON that comes back, and you can see the cookie. So that's what we need to parse. There you go. That's the cookie object that I create. You can see that I've taken the session ID there, so the cookie, and I've created that as the value of a dictionary, the key being cookie. And then we feed that back into the logout. There's my logout status, a successful logout of 204. So that's what I call the cookie method, which was the only method that we had for a Rubro OS switch up until the new version of code 1605. But before we get into the script, Let's have a look what's new in 1605 then for the REST API calls. So the cookie is still included in the JSON response. 
So it's still compatible with your previous scripts that you might have written that parse the cookie. That's good. But there's also in the HTTP response to a login, there's a set cookie. So in the header, you'll see the set cookie value and it will have the cookie in the HTTP response. And that's what the cookie jar uses. So the cookie jar will be populated. Now, there's no parsing of the JSON response. You don't have to create the separate cookie object and in that dictionary of cookie that I showed you. You just create a request session object which has the cookie jar and pass that between calls. And probably more importantly, it aligns with the new operating system from Aruba, Aruba OS CX. So that's the operating system that's running on the new campus core, the Aruba 8400 and the Aruba 8320. So that's great if you're dealing with a mixed OS environment where you've got CX in the core and you've got Aruba OS switch on the edge, because you can use a uniform login approach. You can just use the request session object approach. Okay, let's show you a script for 1605 that utilizes this new method. We are going to do exactly what we did for 1604, just log into the device, get the cookie, and then use that to log out. First of all, we import requests, of course, then we've got JSON and pretty print. This is the URL. Note that it is v4 for 1605. Here's my credentials. So that's my username and password. Simple enough. Now, this is new. This is the request.session object. I've called it S. That's going to store the cookie automatically in the cookie jar. No creating the cookie object. No parsing of the JSON, etc., etc. That's what we will pass to our to our subsequent calls. Now this is our login action then. This is the s.post login session. Here's my data where I load in my username and password. Note that I'm creating another object here, so that's to store the response. Here's my cosmetic print to screen, and I'm going to show you the headers that are stored within R, the cookie that's stored, and I'm also going to show you the JSON that comes back. Then I'm going to log out. So I've created a logout object. Note there's no headers here. We don't need to include that because we are using the S object created up here to persist the cookie. And that will delete our login session. Then I'm just going to print the logout object's status code. So hopefully that will be 204. Here I am back on my Fedora 27 workstation CLI. And let's run that 1605 example for you. Here we are. Okay, so that's just running through. Right, now this, make that a bit bigger so you can see it. Here we go, we'll have to wrap around because I'm using quite a large font here. Right, here's the headers. Now, if you remember, the headers previously for 1604 did not include this set cookie header. So that's what's new. And as you can see, so in the headers, we have the cookie, okay? And look here, cookie jar is now populated. So what we have is automatically we have a populated cookie jar you can see if you just see the ns74sf 74sf for that so automatically the cookie stored in the cookie jar and for compatibility the cookie is still included in the json okay and then that is used to log out so we've got our logout status of 204 so a successful use of the cookie to log out of our session there's quite a lot of detail in there, and I think it's quite hard to grasp the differences first time around. So I'll finish up with a quick recap. I've put the two scripts side by side. Over on the right here, you've got 1604. The key thing to look for is that we are having to parse the cookie and create the cookie object, and then we use that in our headers. 
Now you compare that over on the left here with 1605. We don't have to do that. We create this session object and we pass that between our subsequent calls. No headers for our cookie. The great thing is that both of those options, if you're running 1605, that is both of those options are available to you. You may prefer the previous me method. You might have code that's running 1604 and you're happy with that. That's great. You don't have to change from that because as I showed you, 1605 still includes the cookie in the JSON. It just gives you a different option with 1605 and later to use the request cookie jar if you so wish. Quite a detailed video there, quite specific information, I'm aware of that. I hope you found it useful though and gave you some insight into the developments that we're making on Aruba OS Switch for the API. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back with another video soon. But for now, my name's Joe Neville. Thanks for watching and goodbye.